now in our sixth year, this is GabNet, the Great American Broadcast Network. Talk like you've never heard it before. Live from Harlem in New York. Hey, this is Alex Bennett. See, it says Alex, so it must be Alex Bennett. This is The Ramble, and we go until midnight tonight from the east coast of the United States. Ladies and gentlemen, that mug you're looking at is Walter Sterling. He does a radio program. Sunday nights, may I be on a station near you, okay? How do I know it's near you? Well, get paranoid about that, but I have spies, all right? Ladies and gentlemen, here he is, and uh, it's good to see you again, Walter. Alex, I love being on your show because you invented the Zoom meeting years ago. Well, it wasn't Zoom at the time. I did the what I call the citizen panel, which has become somewhat irrelevant in that it's nothing unusual having more than one person talking to one person on a talk show. So, you it's, know. Um, you invented it. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, yeah, I guess I did. Uh, you did. Yeah, I I also invented a lot of other things, but I never get credit for them. Uh, you never you you never get patents for them. Well, yeah, I created the first podcast. Right, and that was the patent you needed. Yeah, that was the one I needed. But <laughs> uh, to me, I was just doing it because I was out of work and I wanted people to somehow have access to me. So I came up with a way. Oh, and the reason I invented the podcast was with someone else. He created a program called Auto Alex, and you put it on your computer, and then what it would do is once a day it would go to my my feed and see right. if it was a new one and download it to your computer so when you got home it was there. Does that sound like anything to you? It sounds like a billion-dollar idea. Yeah, yeah. Well, we just thought it was a matter of necessity at the time, and I have I actually have the program here still if anybody nobody believes me. So I we we basically invented the 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 podcasting, you know, where, you, where it automatically downloads a show to you and you get to hear it. But yeah. anyway, enough about bragging about me. Uh, you live in Cleveland, Ohio. I live in Shaker Heights, Ohio, which is very different. Oh, okay. It's like the difference between Short Hills and Newark. Oh, okay. Whatever and, that is. Uh, interesting thing about Cleveland, Ohio. Yeah. Is that in. 1950, it was a million population city, which was very unusual. There were very few of them. Yeah. And it was about market number 12. Yeah. Today, it has 300,000 people and is market 33. Wow. And today, it would not get what it has, which is three major league ball teams. It has baseball, football, mm -hmm. basketball. There's no way in heck that we'd get those franchises with only 300,000 citizens. Yeah. But there they are. And those are the largest structures in Cleveland, the stadiums for those teams. There's nothing bigger mm -hmm. than those buildings. Mm -hmm. And it's a tragedy because people do not live in the city of Cleveland because there's nothing there. It's an empty center. It's a donut. There's nothing there. If you walk down the biggest street in Cleveland, the widest boulevard in Cleveland, at noon, you will not run into anybody. Nobody. At noon on a Wednesday, you won't run into anybody because no one lives downtown. Yeah, I know. I've been there. I was there in recent years, and I was amazed how empty that right. old area was. Then you walk out of the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, yeah. which is downtown Cleveland, and you will run into nobody. And then the first ring of housing is government housing. Mm -hmm. It is government subsidized housing that is dangerous, poorly maintained, ugly as hell. Right. The next ring is where the wealthy suburbs are. And the wealthy suburbs were created for Ford, the oil refineries, the oil companies, the railroad companies, which mm -hmm. used to have Cleveland as a hub. And it was vital. And uh, that was all built in the 50s. There hasn't been a new house built in the Cleveland area since the 50s. So nobody lives in Cleveland. And when anybody ever says to me, well, you know, I'm from Cleveland, I look at them and I go, no, you're not. Where are you really from? Well, I'm from Cleveland. I said, where are you really from? And they go, well, you know, I'm from Beach Beachwood or Cleveland Heights or Shaker Heights. I said, that's yeah. right. Yeah, see? 
different. So anyway, uh, 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 Walter is in the radio business, as was I. Uh, and uh, how, how is it affecting the radio business? I mean, uh, I know that, that income is down. Well, iHeart's income is down by half. Really? And the others are down by about a third. Whoa. Because, because radio's income is 100% dependent on local retail advertising. And if no stores are open, there's no advertising. And so that's what's happened to, to um, uh, iHeart. Yep. Yep. Well, gee, they've got my podcast on iHeart. I have no idea why, why it isn't uh, more popular. It's uh, a good question. Yes, because that should be making them a fortune. A fortune. Yeah. Uh, and, and, and the rest are down a third. So how does, uh, how, do, uh, how does that affect the, pe the working people, what are left in the radio business? Because Half of them are furloughed. Yeah. Half of them are fired. Really? So yeah, what so are they on what, skeleton staff. So what are they doing for programming? Are they just uh, running programs in from other cities and things like yes. that? It's all uh, on computer. It's all run uh, on automated computers. You could listen to some stations by some of these companies, and there is no local talent, no one in the building. There's no one in the well, building. Well, didn't they just pass a law that you didn't have to actually have an office in the city? You've got the transmitter or something? There was a time when you got in the business. Yeah. And when I got in the business. Yeah. So very recently. When there was a business. Yeah. When you had to be within a certain length from the post office, you had to have your facility a certain distance from the post office in order to meet FCC requirements. That was eliminated. And when that was eliminated, hundreds of people lost their jobs because they didn't need to maintain a building. Well, yeah, they used to have to maintain offices in the city in which the transmitter was located or reasonably within where, because like the transmitter for WMCA wasn't in New York City, it was in New Jersey. But right. nevertheless, you had that transmitter and they had to have an office from which they broadcast. Now right. they're saying you don't even have to have that, which means all these people can have their transmitters around the country with a line going to those transmitters, and then they just feed them the signal, and that's it. They don't have to have an office in that town. Ergo, they don't have to hire a staff. They don't have to hire people. They, you know, and uh, broadcasters you, are out of work. If you have a general popular music station, adult contemporary, mm -hmm. There is, in fact, and I'm speaking as a programmer, there is, in fact, no reason to have local talent at those stations. You could do it with one set of talent and one playlist, and I'll tell you how scary that gets. On Sirius, for a long time, you could get KISS FM in Los Angeles and Z100, and they were next to each other, like Channel 13 and 14. Mm -hmm. And you could listen to Z100 and uh, KISS FM in Los Angeles live. Mm -hmm. on Sirius. And I started doing this. I started to listen to KISS, then Z100. Listen to KISS, then Z100. And you know what? They were not only following the same playlist, they were <laughs> following it in the same order. So if you heard a song on KISS, you went to Z100, you would hear it next. Wow. That's how it became, because those were computer-generated playlists. <sighs> and th thus becomes the end of the radio as we knew it. Um, I mean, I, I, I know, I realize that I am a, uh, a dinosaur, you know, that what I, the kind of, ra the reason I went into radio and the kind of radio I went in for doesn't exist anymore. Drips and drabs. A little bit here, a little bit there. Huh? Um, there's no reason it can't. Uh, when not only was it hyper-local when you and I went into it, but it was proud to be, and it was a social gestalt that it had to be. There was nothing harder in the 70s and 80s than to convince a radio station to take a network show mm -hmm. than to take a syndicate, because their first thing they'd say is, we're local, we're 100% local. That was the first thing they'd say. And, but the fact is, is that when it was deconstructed, they weren't as local as they should have been. So syndicators used to say, you're 100% local. Yes, we are. We're very proud of it. Well, um, pick an hour, like from noon to one. What did your disc jockey say today that was local in any way? 
And then you'd sit down and listen to an air check, and they hadn't said a damn thing. Right. Well, so, uh, there was also there was also another element. You know, when I started out being a disc jockey and then a talk show host, the idea was you were doing a show, or as I call it, a program, and that your job was to entertain. Yeah. And and there's no sense of that anymore in no. in radio. I mean, it's play one record after another and try and sound like you're entertaining in between, but they're not. The you other know. thing that happened is that on-air talent's salaries have been consistently cut. Mm -hmm. And the money for content is now on the internet. It's digital content on multiple sites where they're paying big bucks. And more importantly, those digital sites are paying their salespeople huge bucks. So if you're a good seller and you look at what you could earn at a radio station or a radio network versus what you could earn at an internet site, you're going to the internet. Mm -hmm. So all the, all the money is at the internet because the internet sites, the digital sites have dumb money, which means they don't have to prove it does any good. Right. Whereas at a radio or TV station now, to this day, they have to prove it's gonna do some good. Mm -hmm. the, the digital companies, they're sitting there designed to throw away money. That's what they're doing. Uh, to earn a position, to get a position. And hundreds of thousands of people, talent and sellers, are benefiting from that. Oh, boy. You know, it, it's just, uh, you know, so, I mean, I, I, I realized, you know, a while back, when I turned 80, I said, that's it. You know, I said, I've got to realize that I'm never going to be doing radio again. But then again, there is no radio, really. I mean, you said you're on WABC here in New York with a guy who isn't really in it to make a buck. And, right. and so he's trying to revive what radio does. And that's right. terrific, you know. Uh, but I'm still probably even too old for him. You know, I mean, it's, it's, um, it's weird. It's very weird. And it's a strange feeling because it's a business I've been in all my life. So here I sit here doing this little uh, dog and pony show. Uh, with a re relatively small audience, although it's larger than a lot of people get with podcasts. Um, and that's it, you know. Uh, that's The only reason I do it is to keep my chops up. Yeah, so. Anyway, um, it, it's, it's sad. If you happening. had a radio job, mm -hmm. you'd be miserable. Yes, yes because you would be critiqued on criteria you didn't understand. Yeah. And you would, um, you'd be being critiqued by people you didn't respect. Yeah. And, and I'd be critiqued by people who don't ask the big question, were you entertaining today? And the big issue is, um, Hmm. You don't need it. You have this body of work that's unquestionable. Yeah. You've, accomplished, you've accomplished things that people can only imagine. Mm -hmm. And you have worked at radio stations that most people cannot get tours of. <laughs> You're right. You're right. And, I mean, yeah, and you, know. you worked at Sirius, mm -hmm. which everybody begs to work out longer than anybody else. Well, not longer than anybody else now, but longer than anybody else then. But that's an amazing achievement. Yeah. It's like, yeah. that's good. Okay, so that's enough. Yeah, I guess. Well, I, look, I'm not sitting around here griping about my career. Yes, you are. No, well, I guess I am. Well, no, because <laughs> I like to perform. I like to have my stage, you know, and I don't, and I, I have it, but I don't have it. I mean, I don't consider, I'm competing, as you so nicely uh, surmised once, I'm competing against some young girl giving makeup tips. Yes. You know, and she's getting a million listeners and I'm getting a couple of hundred, you know. Yes. Uh, how do you compete with that? I guess I better give up makeup tips, uh, you know. But guess what? In a few years, yeah. a variety of FTC and SEC rules are going to come down and put her out of business. Do you think so? Yes. And then she's going to be going, oh, but I had this audience. I had this great, for I love doing this. I can't do this anymore. What do I do? Well... I don't know. So that's the deal. Yeah. What, what do and, you do? Uh, Run for president. 
and just yeah. think about all the and and it evolves and but think about like all the foley guys in network radio yeah. sitting well, around fo complaining foley guys they were foley the guys, guys who did the sound effects yeah think yeah. about those guys hey listen we've run out of time again I'm sorry. When we're having fun, isn't it amazing? We're having entertaining radio. We're having entertaining radio, and I'm no more, no person more entertaining. But let me tell you something. Yeah. When the revolution came in July and June, yeah, all I could think about was how you sounded on WMCA in late 1969. Yeah. And your anger, and how you played uh, "When the Revolution Comes." Mm-hmm. And all the tired horses by Bob Dylan. Yeah, and it was the most compelling radio anybody ever heard, including Howard Stern. Has said that was the most compelling radio anybody ever heard. He said that. He said that more than once. Never told me. He was on <laughs> the air. You were supposed to be listening. Oh, I see. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, that face is Walter Sterling, and he is on your radio on Sunday nights, uh, ten o'clock Eastern. On a station near you, there are a lot of them. Anyway, thank you, Walter. I appreciate it. Thank you, Alex. Always an honor to be with you. Now in our sixth year, this is GabNet, the great American broadcast network. Talk like you've never heard it before. Hello, everybody. How are you? Uh, yes, okay. Uh, yeah, yeah. I, I, I had the sound a little low there for a moment because... I, I just, uh, I don't know how to think ahead any longer on the show on what I need to do and what I don't need to do. Anyway, hello, everybody. We're, uh, no, oh, they're there. The people are starting to uh, coming uh, online. Uh, and uh, I'm laughing because of what somebody just called themselves. Uh, we are on uh, Zoom. We do Zoom. Why? Because the rest of the world does it. And also because we found that up until now it's the best system we've found. We were using Skype for the longest time, but Skype has its problems and it's not as simple for an average person to use. For all of you out there, all you got to do, go to gabnet.net and on that page on the right-hand side column, middle, there is a, there is a uh, uh, thing that, uh, that says if you want to talk to us, just click here to Zoom. And you click there, and it literally, if even if you don't have Zoom installed on your computer, will take you uh, to our show and make you part of the citizen panel, which is a group of people talking together. Boy, I have a headache now. What is this? Boy, it's one thing after another. I'm, I'm tired of being tired. I'm tired of getting old. Anyway, it's time now to have some people admitted to our... Uh, 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 to our uh, panel, and uh, look who we have already. We have uh, uh, Bob, uh, Robert Natali, and 74 Days to Vote. Uh, that's uh, Brian. And, of course, we've got Josh Wheeler. Hello to all of you. How are you this fine evening? Good evening. Yes. Good. Yeah, are you, your house isn't on fire yet, Brian? No, actually, it's cleared up a little bit over here, but there's another small fire that came up. But, yeah, the other side of the bay is hitting it really hard, though. Wow. Yeah, uh, so Santa Cruz Mountains up over that way. Uh, I have a couple of friends that live up there. I know one guy lost his house. And, yes, yeah, so I know a few guys from cars up there. So it's, yeah, it's yeah. pretty bad. Yeah. Uh, let me say something. I, uh, I, I've been getting a lot of complaints about the chat room that, accompanies this program, which I really don't have anything to do with. I hardly ever look at it. Um, uh, and uh, I've been thinking about doing away with it because there's a lot of uh, complaints about certain trolls on the chat room that are making racist remarks and no. so on. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, don't censor, I, Alex. Well, I'm thinking of doing it. It isn't a matter of censoring it. It's a matter of doing away with it. Then I don't have to censor it, you know? Yeah, exactly. Uh, uh, it's it's up to the people who are doing it. There's a, a couple of people who are are very much trolls. And, uh, I, and I don't see any value in it, to be very honest with you. Uh I noticed Bree is on it from time to time. So yeah. I guess you, you oh, it. and Ray is on there too, and Charlie. Yeah. Yeah. Charlie, yes, and Charlie. Yeah. yeah. But uh, Charlie, you wouldn't break your heart if I stopped oh, the chat room, would it? 
Oh, you, you oh, well, I mean, uh, I, it wouldn't break my heart, but I don't really see that there's a reason to. I haven't seen any racism. Uh, wait, wait, hold on. What is that? What is that? Is that some kind of noise coming from somewhere? Um, uh, yeah. Okay. Um, was it coming when I was talking? I, no, 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 no. no. Oh. While you were talking, it was on. I, what is Bree doing? I think he's doing the yard work. I, yeah, <laughs> I'm doing, like. yeah. I, I'm trying to grow some sunflower. Well, I have wheatgrass here, yeah. and I'm trying to grow some sunflowers over here, but something yeah. keeps eating it. Well, would you pay? And if, if you're calling the show, call to be a participant, not to be a, a, a gardener. I, I'm participating, Alex. I, I, you know, I'm not always talking. If you call me or if there's a topic, I'll come up. Mm -hmm. uh, okay. But I want to be productive. You, I mean, everybody's just sitting there. You know, that's how we get Yeah, canceled. but it, it is, I think, a little distracted <clears throat> to the viewer to have somebody in really? one of these panels kind of moving around and doing stuff Multitasking. Like that. Yeah, yeah, well, multitasking, yeah, yeah. Uh, right, you know. Uh, it, it uh, you know, it's kind of, uh, I, I, you know, I almost sometimes mind it when I, like Ray used to call and be walking <laughs> down the street, you know, and yeah. it's nice up to a point, but, you know, it's nice that we see that you're in Kuala Lumpur and you're doing your gardening and uh, maybe you'll have some lovely herbs in a few weeks. Um, no, I've got some now. But it's not, it's <clears throat> not, uh, it, it's, it's kind of jarring as it were really yeah yeah well not for your younger audiences if you they they're used to it oh yeah yeah you're the uh you're, you're the person young who tells yeah, i what represent young, the younger what, what uh, young demographic people, and we <laughs> we like to do things see things yeah. it's interesting how old are you okay now alex how let, old, me, how, let me ask you how, this. How old Let's are you? Wait a minute. How old are you? Old enough to Three. know. Old enough to know better. Young enough still to try. It's not the uh, years in your life that count so much as the life in your years. Mm -hmm. But Alex, what if one of the participants had a, had a camera on their bedroom, and they were engaged in uh, carnal activities? Would you tell them they can't be part of the show? That's right. Midnight yeah. Blue. But, uh, Midnight Blue. We never had people having sex on the show. <laughs> well. No, uh, I, would, I would, I would, I would, I would completely block them because uh, uh, that is against the rules and regulations <laughs> of YouTube, and I would be taken off. And why should I jeopardize um, my show because somebody not, wants to fuck on screen? Not necessarily. Yes, if you look up uh, Phil, Korean uh, dramas, uh, eighteen plus. Uh, I don't care. I don't it. care what you say, Bree. I know what it's all about. I deal with it all the time. I deal with these letters from YouTube and so on when something goes on and demonetization and one thing and another and I don't need it. Why I should do I, too. why did why should I have to do that? You know? Hey, Alex, did you want to see it. two people having sex on Zoom? Yeah, what? We need Zoom for that. <laughs> what did you say? I just Brian? passed over 10 million views on uh, Google Photos. Good. Alex, what what was uh, Walter talking about? He's talking about that that uh, that uh, what's his name? Howard Stern was complimenting you on some radio stuff you did back he, then. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. According to him, I mean, Walter knows Howard quite well. That Howard has said that I, I had an. In well, of course, I know I had an influence on him, but he know. was talking about some certain some certain talks you were talking about. Yeah, it was some some something I did way back when when I was at WMCA and Kent State had taken place. You know what I'm talking about, huh, Robert? And uh, I, uh, I, I talked very passionately about the situation, and, and uh, um, uh, Walter has always said to me what an influence that was on him and made him see the possibilities of, uh, of radio and so on. And then he said Howard also said the same thing to him, that it was, uh, it was very important to his growing up. And that, that's nice to know. I just wish Howard hadn't gone around telling everybody I stole his act my act from yeah. him you know yeah. that kind of shit you know if he'd said yeah. that it might have helped me a little bit you know but anyway um hi phil hey how you doing okay how you doing uh, uh bag number one uh bag number two. Oh, you got the, <laughs> another bag i am i didn't know you were a bag man yeah, that's a, that. But he, the people have been putting bags, or the post office, I guess, have been putting bags over their, uh, 
over one of the two post office boxes in his neighborhood, and he takes them off. And uh, uh, did you, anybody here enjoy uh, his testimony? Today? Yeah, mm-hmm. I, yeah. I saw a few minutes of it. Uh, most, uh, er, I know, and you I, thought he was terrific. No, no, the only <laughs> ones I, I saw ask him questions were um, uh, who's the guy from Tennessee? His father was a senator. Uh, 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 Grand Paul. Uh, Grand Paul, yeah, he got beat up mm-hmm. by his neighbor. I didn't see him asking that many questions. But I. No, I, I still don't understand all this. I, I truly don't understand. I, I is it is Trump trying to get some bargaining power? Uh, hey, uh, what happened today is uh, I saw the joy. Kind of got a stutter, you know. He, um, uh, but that was that was about it. I didn't get much from the conversation. I only saw a small. Segment. I saw a guy who was really worried about being there. Yeah. yeah they're- there are people that stutter because they have a stuttering problem, and there are people that are stuttering when they lie. Well, yeah. no, he said, yeah. hey, I've been here 60 days, and, uh, you know, I'm trying to— Biden can help him with that stutter. Try, yeah, really. I, I was trying to turn it into a more profitable or have it lose less money. That's not the point. He thinks that he's going to treat the post office like you treat a business, and you can't do that. It's yeah. not, but it is a business. No, Phil, it's not a business. Look, it is it's not a public a service. It is a, it, no, in 2006, it's a public service. In 2006, it it's a public me. service, Phil. In 2006, I don't care what me. it did. That the post office it, should be able to lose money and still get money from the government to support it. Okay, because I we just, have a lot of programs that lose money, and okay. there are government stipends to save them because they do a public service. You don't yeah, seem to understand have, what the post office is, Phil. I guess we'll have a GoFundMe for the post office. No. And, and this way, Bannon can rip it off. Yeah. 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 He's going to need it for his legal you defense. Mean, you mean the guy yeah. that Trump doesn't know? Yeah. Yeah. The guy that Trump fired. He yeah. took a picture with him once. Yeah. 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 Did you yeah. hear the latest about the dude, uh, about the, uh, the yacht that he was caught on, the guy that owns that? Uh, he's, he's, like, wanted in China. He's, like, he... he He's a bigger what? scam artist than uh, Bannon. Uh, he, what what dude is that? The, he's a Chinese guy. He's a Chinese fugitive, a billionaire, young guy. He he's in, involved in all kinds of scams. Now he's getting into scams with Biden. I mean, with uh, yeah, with Bannon. <laughs> I think you mean the Malaysian Chinese. Yeah, what if the guy that owns the fucking yacht that they caught Bannon on? Yeah. monkey business. He's actually Malaysian. He's from yeah, this country yeah. here. Yeah, well, he's a he's a wanted fugitive in China. Hmm. Everybody's a fugitive in China. No, not everybody's also- a fugitive in China. <laughs> uh, okay, so if you belong to the Politburo, you no. Good. I have a people, many people I know who work with my wife who live in China, and they're not a member of the Communist Party, and they're not uh, having trouble getting in and out of the country at all. He's hmm. also involved. He's. He's, you know, there's an active uh, investigation with uh, the FBI against him, too, which might ensnare uh, uh, Bannon yeah. as well. And um, the speculation now that I've been reading is uh, Bannon might have some dirt on Trump, and they might have some... Uh, you know, leverage with. <laughs> I'll tell you, that every because, day, every day, every, every, every day that goes by, with every day that goes by, uh, I'm beginning to think that Putin does have some pee pee pictures. Yeah. Hey. Because he is so, he just doesn't ever take Putin to task. I mean, now a reporter, a critic of the government, has been poisoned yeah. in Russia. Yeah, yeah. And, he doesn't, the team. And, and he doesn't mm-hmm. say, and he doesn't say anything about it. Yeah. You know, I mean, he he loves to hang out and praise dictators and let them get away with stuff. He let the Saudis get away with Khashoggi. He lets Putin get away with poisoning reporters. He lets a lot of people. And then there's a good pal uh, in uh, North Korea. Boy, how yeah. did that work out for him? Now, Khashoggi was a reporter. Uh, this guy in Russia was a reporter. Mm-hmm. You know, maybe there's a connection there. What, what do you mean? There is a they connection. Like they all happen to be people yeah. who are critical of their governments. Famous. Yeah, working for the fake news, I guess. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. Oh boy, Phil. I don't, I don't fake know. news. Why did they have to kill them? Uh, that's one way to get rid of the fake news. 
Yeah. And he just drank some tea. It disagreed with him. Ah, yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Did you see those doctors? They look. They look scared straight when they said that. Yeah. Charlie, didn't you want to say something? Yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, but they went on the band, and I was going to talk about the joy. Yeah, well, go ahead. Tell, talk go about ahead. the joy. That's all. Well, the joy says he's trying to improve the post office, but how does it improve the post office? and make it more profitable if you take away a machine that processes 30,000 items per minute and you, I mean per hour and then you're going to replace it with with a guy. Yeah. Well, and also it, also remember one other thing about those machines. They've been destroyed. Oh, right. They've been yeah. destroyed. Yeah. They were not really just taken out of, out of service. They yeah. were destroyed. How old were those machines? Uh, they were not very people? old. They're yes, modern they're not, machines. It didn't matter. Yeah. How many how many uh, workers have come out and and said uh, details? Thanks, Bree. Yeah, how, how, how many uh, postal employees have come out and um, uh, made you know you know record, reported about you know the, all the uh, the put the, the the mail that's being left on the floor? That, that's a yeah. interesting question. Have, have They're any, still taking machines out of service. I know, but have any? It's they, unbelievable. Uh, it's it's basically the okay. So the so he can say the election is is fraudulent. It's rigged because they can't count all the ballots. Is that yeah. right? Yeah, Only the ballots that are be. for him. Yeah. If it's for Trump, it counts. Yeah. If it's for Biden, throw it out or you lose your job. Exactly. Did I get that right? Something like yep. that. Yeah. But no. Okay. I, but the thing is that that uh, I talked to our our postal guy here, and he said, no, they they took those machines out. They destroyed. He said we can't put them back in. They're destroyed. They yeah. dismantled them. Yeah. So did, did the joy give a plan as to what his uh, what is? Let me put it this way, Phil. Let me put it in a very nice way. He dismantled the machine you and I paid for. Yes, but does he have a plan to uh, to put the post office uh, to be more profitable? And what he said was he, he wanted he wanted yeah. the services to be yeah. better. He didn't want to cut out Saturday service. He does have the same Why plan the that Trump has for, well, well, to let, replace let, Obamacare with. Let, yeah. Rob, what did you yeah. say? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Hold on a second, Seriously, Phil. Please, was, Phil, uh, let Rob uh, talk, please. I can't hear what he's saying <laughs> because you Rob. because you're jumping over him. I just said that he has the exact same plan that Trump has for replacing Obamacare. That's the plan. Nothing. No, no, no plan. You know, the plan. guy testified in, in front of the Senate today, and I was just wondering if anybody heard anything that was positive. You're going to sit there and be negative, 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 you know. Uh, well, they were all, all, he, all he did was give excuses, Jesus excuses, Christ. excuses. Right. What did he say without your interpretation? Excuses uh, uh, on why uh, why he was doing what he was doing, and why did he why did he say what he was doing? He was and, trying to make the post office more efficient. How do you make it more efficient by taking machines out of service? Uh, so did he say that he had a plan? How for, do you make a how do you make anything more uh, 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 work better by taking away the very machines you need to make them work? If, if you're using a buggy whip. Instead of a, uh, instead of a, these an weren't buggy whips, Phil. These were machines that were maybe five years old. Well, it's going they, backwards, they were Phil. Problem. I don't know. He's I'm getting rid of the machine and <laughs> replacing them with buggy I'm whips. saying I talked to my postman and he said they weren't a problem. I see. So your postman has the answer. Well, he okay. certainly has more answers than you do because he works for the post yeah, office. The well, hey, I've seen, I've been to the post, I went to the post office today and mailed a package. So there. Yeah, okay. So make a joke and not and uh, answer the I argument. Asked a question. I saw only okay, a couple okay. of minutes. Calm, of, calm down. There are other people here. There are other people here. J Josh, <laughs> did you see any of it at all? What's that? Did you see any of it at all, the postmaster general? Boy. Uh I had, uh, when I turned the television on, it was on C-SPAN when I came home, and it was on, and I heard maybe four or five minutes while I was doing something before I uh, changed the channel, but I had a really busy day today, so I didn't I didn't hear in person any of the testimony there. That's most people. Most people are just trying to get through their life, you know, trying to do their job. We, we trust that the guy on top is doing his, and it's a shame when we can't. 
Very point well, right? point well taken. Yeah, yeah. Um, you know, I mean, I, I, I just, uh, you know, I just think that uh, forget about any political things about doing this to the post office. What he did to the post office was absolutely weird, and it was uncalled for. And uh, he he should have asked somebody, can I do this? He just went in. He's only been in there a couple of months. Went in and just started dismantling for the sake of dismantling. Yeah. Taking apart machines are very much easier than putting them back together. That's for sure. Well, You're they're not going to be able to put them back together. So, from what I've heard, yeah. they've been we destroyed. The machine in New Hampshire, which had only one such machine in the whole state. Oh my God! I, I failed to see how you can say that improves their efficiency. Yeah, yeah. So this is setting up for the election, right? This is setting it up. Right. And this and guy has never had this it. guy has never had any experience with the postal service. He ran a uh, a second rate uh, parcel service, uh, and uh, that's about all he all his qualifications were. And because he is a um, uh, uh, what do you call it, an acting postmaster general and never has gone before a committee to be approved as postmaster general uh yeah. his job is on is very tenuous at best and anytime i mean the thing is we he, there are more acting people in the yeah in this government than have ever been in any other administration because trump wants to feel he can fire them at a moment's notice and he, he can put who he wants there yeah, yep. exactly. without approval. Without the approval. Yeah, you have to do his bidding or else you're gone. Yes. Right. And that's how I think he wins the election. Well, you're a Fox News. He can win the I mean, this guy shouldn't go around dismantling equipment and so on when he hasn't even been approved by the Senate or by he the Congress. He should go to prison. He huh? should go to prison if it's proven that he's. Yeah. Uh, well, it's. Yeah. yeah, it's. it's. I would agree. He's going to prison. Down the mail. Yeah, You're this is the U.S. Postal the US Service. Mail. Exactly. If, if we take, if we go into a mailbox and take somebody else's mail, yeah, we go to jail. Exactly. I mean, this, this, everybody knows that that's serious. It, they mean it. I mean, it's in movies. Brian's like yeah. the firm, Tom Cruise. Yeah. Yeah. Brian, you know, you know what? If get you, him on mail a, fraud. It's an offense if you go in, you know, if you're walking around, you can put a flyer on someone's door, but you're not allowed to put it in their mailbox. Yeah. That's right. Hmm. You're that's not to right. fuck with the U.S. mail. And this acting. And this, that's all this guy's yeah. doing. Yep. That's all he's they, doing. They kept saying, also, they kept saying, thank you for your service to the guy. Who did? Uh, they well, kept well, saying that during the interview. Thank you for your service. I'm like, what the hell? Yeah. It's not like he's a general. I know. <laughs> they should have thanked you, Brian. But you see, thanking him for his service means that it's a public service. You know, I mean, Brian, you know, uh, Brian was worried about uh, perhaps getting in trouble for removing hmm. uh, what the post office had put over the post, op post box by taking away the covering so that it could be used again. Uh, and he's worried about getting in trouble for that. And this guy shouldn't get in trouble for destroying U.S. property? Yes, Brian Neary. Uh, yes, and officer. Brian has the evidence in his studio uh, uh, he destroyed public property. Let's get Brian. No, get you know what I'm worried about? I, I have to give, I have to give my poop sample. I'm waiting until Monday now well. because I want to make sure I have consecutive days of mail. I was worried about doing it today, and then Saturday may sit, Sunday may sit, then Monday. I need my poop to be good for my doctor. Uh, Brian has uh, decreed I, I will to say now, Brian, if, if anything happens, uh, I will contribute to your GoFundMe. Oh, thank you. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, we will all be out here defending you. Yes. Thanks. You know. It, it's probably not the post office that put those bags over there on, on them anyway. It's probably like Trump trolls. No, I don't think so. I don't think no. so. I think that uh, that was their way of saying we're, we only have one post office box here they, now. They, not they two. used a lot of tape. And did you notice if you go to the post office and you need them to tape up something, they spare oh, yeah. no expense when it comes to putting the tape on the package? Yeah. Yes, uh, Charlie. Yeah, I saw a report today that the uh, uh, memo came down that postal employees are forbidden to speak to the press. That's right. Wow. wow. <clears throat> Some of the postal employees <laughs> were saying that they, they were told that they took those boxes away and they were going to redistribute them other places. 
That's what they were told initially, and then they all uh, sat and they all locked them all up. That's uh, that's so, what Biden said when he was going to defund the police. He says, "No, I'm just going to redistribute." Phil, the money. Phil, stop it! Just so stop it! It's stop it's it. very clear. You're not discussing. You're we all know. What? But you see, when when we talk about the specifics, then we go down into the mud. You don't have to go into the mud. You can see it from above. You can call it for what it is, and we know what it is. But w what are we going to do about it? What There's are people going do to do about it? So, okay, then Trump around. wins. Well, and then he Trump wins. Ass out. Well, I'm no, he, he and, controls the people who control the vote. And how do you redistribute po post office boxes? I mean, if you take yeah. them, there's, there's one on a corner as a convenience to that neighborhood. You remove it, mm -hmm. and they got to walk three blocks to go to the closest <laughs> mailbox. How is that redistributing them? You yeah. know, how is I'm that even... You're not even economizing by doing that. Yeah. It's not saving you any money by doing that. Unless they have two, like over here, and they take one away, you know, and then they never bring it back. Now you only got one. But. Yeah, exactly. So. Country's in a yeah. bad, bad way. We are in bad shape, uh, Rob. Absolutely. Very scary. It's very scary. Yeah. And Americans All are letting it happen. Donald Trump. This, this is what Americans you. This are is, letting it happen, folks. This is what you imagine in a in a banana republic. This is what you imagine yeah. in a third world nation, in which a dissent is stifled and uh, the vote is uh, taken away, and um, it, people are, it's made more difficult for people to vote. And that's what uh, Trump is up to now: is trying to make it more difficult for people to vote, especially during a pandemic giving reasons that are absolutely fallacious and without any kind of basis in fact. So, you know, I mean, uh, here's a man who's trying to, to interrupt our ability to vote, and I, and I don't like that because he sees that if everybody in this country went out and voted, he hasn't got a chance of being president again. And then he says last night, well, I heard this yesterday. It wasn't last night. I heard it last night, but he said straight to the press, if Biden wins, it's a fixed election. Yeah, I heard that, yeah. You know yeah. what I heard today? I heard him actually say the following. He said, if, uh, if, uh, if uh, 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 Biden is president, he will increase your taxes four times. Yeah, bullshit. Wait a minute. Let me think about this. What is the current tax rate? Something like 25%, right? Yeah. Okay. So four times would be 100% of your 100%. salary. Yeah. Do you really think that Biden is going to tax 100% of your salary? Sure. No. No. Sure. You know. Um, I mean, come on. It's those kind of tactics and those kind of statements which are, fa in fact, absolutely fallacious. You know, I mean, and, and to, to the Democrats' better nature, they're kind of avoiding these stupid fights with him about the things yeah. he says. Yep. You know, they're just trying to say, hey, look, this guy is not, it has Let not done a good himself. job. You know, all you have to do is look at the job he's done. Let him hang himself with yeah. his own stupid words. By the way, I noticed Bree is sweating. It must be hot in Kuala Lumpur today. It is, yes. By the uh, way, the highest tax bracket is 37%. So yeah. four times hot. that is over 150%. Yeah. You, yeah. Actually, it's not so hot. It's uh, it's the humidity. Oh, okay, yes. Let course. me ask. <laughs> Alexa, what is the temperature in Kuala Lumpur? Or I guess just here, I should say. Right now, in Kuala Lumpur, it's 88 degrees Fahrenheit. Today, expect a high of 90 degrees. Well, okay. it's winter time. That's kind of in like, Texas. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, Rob, Robert, yeah. I mean, did you did you see the Postmaster General? Yeah, parts of it, about as much as Josh said he did. I was sort of in and out on it. The thing that I that struck me was that they had actual documents in certain cases about um, not allowing for any overtime or any second deliveries. Meanwhile, DeJoy denied that that was the case. And so at some point, it's pretty clear that the documents kind of make them out not telling the whole truth. So, but then, yeah, I mean, they, it wasn't anything I didn't expect. So it didn't shock me in any way. 
Well, if yeah, you they know. said the trucks, yeah. the, the trucks that are leaving, they said sometimes those trucks would stay like 15 minutes for this whole batch to be done, and they could yeah. deliver that whole batch at once on the truck and the airplane. Yeah. But they said no, they're going to leave on time. So that means if they're leaving, and if they would wait five or ten minutes for another batch to get done to deliver a full truck, they're mm -hmm. just going to take off. Yeah, yeah. Uh, That's horrible. So yeah, it's uh, the whole thing That's is why deplorable. It takes two weeks to get well, there. first, there is no, yeah. there is no large corporation seeking profit in the country that would ever ship anything less than truckload that wasn't absolutely necessary exactly. for an expedite. I mean, if we can put forty-four thousand pounds of paint on a trailer and we ship thirty-six thousand pounds of paint on a trailer, someone in our distribution center calls and says, you know, what the fuck's wrong with you? You could have put. Mm -hmm a lot more stuff on here what happened i mean we literally get a report that says how many trailers we short ship a month and we provide explanations as to why well you know if if um, uh if if the post office gets more inefficient because of the joy's actions it's going to hurt their business with people like amazon and the people who are going to benefit from it are ups and all the other people who are delivering on time you know, maybe we should get UPS to deliver the votes. I don't know. Yeah. yeah. Well, first of all, UPS and FedEx contract out the U.S. Postal Service to deliver a lot of their packages anyway. I don't know if anyone's ever noticed that. It's the last. They, but, they're um, on record as saying that they yeah. can't do it. I mean, they're on they, record. Well, they, they can't use do them it, but, wait, they quite can't. often. I mean, I'm waiting for a package to come tomorrow that was at the FedEx location at the local center here and they're transferring it tomorrow or actually tonight to the u.s postal service branch that delivers to me and the post office will bring my fed my package tomorrow with a fedex tracking number of yeah, all the packages that's the of last all, mile. of all the packages last you must live in the oh, boonies wait, wait a minute hold yeah. on, hold they on call that last of mile all, of all the packages that i've gotten this year and believe me i've gotten a lot of them because we've done a lot of amazon shopping in order to not have to go outside I would say only maybe two packages came USPS as the last mile. Okay. I get so, it all the time. You get it all the time? Hmm. I mean, it's fairly common. You live in the sticks, Rob? Yes. Hey, did, yeah. uh, did FedEx stop working with uh, uh, Amazon? No. Uh, no. Which which of the delivery companies? Yes, uh, FedEx stopped FedEx working did. with Amazon. Yes, That's FedEx right. stopped. stopped. Okay. Yeah, Amazon's going to create its own system. Eventually, uh, everything will be Amazon. I think and Amazon Taco Bell. has. I think if if I read it correctly, Amazon has nixed the idea of doing its own shipping. Didn't they buy a uh, whole bunch of electric? They're doing it through drones. They, they bought a whole bunch of electric trucks from this uh, company that is like uh, Tesla, but it's they not. They are doing in Manhattan. You do not realize. Uh, uh, Rob, 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 you do not realize, it, Alex. It, all restaurants in the future are Taco Bell. Rob, in, the, in, in uh, New York City, uh, a lot of the deliveries from Amazon that my wife got at her office were, came by Amazon delivery. In wow. fact, yeah, there's, in fact, Alex, yeah. in my area, all I see is Amazon vans, and they bought Amazon just bought right about ten minutes from my house. They bought a big lot of land, and they're gonna have a plant there because it's in Queens, and Queens is adjacent to Manhattan. Well, I know they're they're Never talking to Simon again. Properties about taking over big box stores and malls like J.C. Penney. Yeah, they're already taking over oh, the yeah. entire malls, yeah. the dead malls. Soon, Amazon will own everything. Uh, the guy is worth trillions of trillion dollars. Like he's yeah. going to be the first trillionaire. He he will have everything. You know all the backbone of the internet, all the wet like Netflix. It runs on Amazon services. Well, my web uh, services. my uh, what do you call it? My um, uh, website, uh, not website, but all. If you go to my Roku channel, all that stuff is being uh, the uh, the data. The, I, a small amount of data. I don't even pay anything for it every month. Uh, it goes through AWS. Oh, that's Amazon. Yep. Yeah. Hey, uh, talking about trillions, did you hear that Apple reached a value of two trillion today? Yep. Yeah. Isn't that amazing? You know. Yeah. I, I I'll tell you something. There is something that bothers me about the fact that these companies have the pandemic has really enriched them. Yeah. Uh, and uh, I yeah. I don't I don't see them giving anything back. You know, 
I mean, if if we wanted to say that anybody was profiteering off the pandemic, you could make a good case that Apple's profiteering off the pandemic, well, that, uh, that Amazon you, is, and so have, on. What? But what does that mean? Are they if they're not price gouging? No, they're mm -hmm. not price gouging. So then there's nothing wrong with but it. But they're it's making business. they're making a profit though off the pandemic. I mean, the so, pan, but they're, they're making profit on well, business. I mean, Alex is uneasy about it. He's not saying legislate, are you, Alex? No, I'm not saying legislate, but I do feel uneasy about it. And the fact that it doesn't seem like they feel any necessity to give back on some level. Well, you know what they I are doing? to be broken up. They're monopoly. No, I don't think so. You know what they are giving back? They get to give back a split four for one to take their price. That's going to be marketable so you could the regular person could invest. Because they're splitting the so, uh, uh, the average person could invest, but I, I, I don't see that as giving back. It's taking well, I mean, more. Well, you they know. sure aren't paying taxes on those profits. Well, yeah. you're paying taxes on your dividends, though. That you got to claim. No, no. Amazon you're talking about the individual. Zero dollars in tax. I thought you were talking well, about Apple, though. I'm talking about Apple. They're splitting four for one the 31st. That really so, doesn't mean a thing in the end, though. It just takes the stock price and divides it by four. That doesn't really. Yeah, but it lets the, it lets the regular invested. person who doesn't have who could afford five hundred dollars a share. Yeah, I understand, Tony. But Apple doesn't really give a shit about that. They've got the money either way. So yeah, if that, you can buy it or you can't buy it, somebody yeah, else they're not, has. They're it. not devaluing devaluing the price of their company. They're they're simply cutting right. their their shares but in 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 a quarter so that he, so the people to buy in so well, look at the opposite yeah. of that is berkshire hathaway you know what's the price of a berkshire hathaway stock it's about i don't even well, know but i see wait a minute i, I used to have it here oddly enough and uh about four hundred thousand, i think no no way really? Hold on a second. Wow. i'll tell you i'll tell you in a second here let me see here berkshire i was always hathaway. uh wondering like when um what's this warren buffett when his wife passed away I was like, wow, like they're going to let her die. Yeah, I think uh, if, Bur if you have a yeah. could, go oh, ahead, sorry. go ahead. If you have a trillion dollars, like you think like I just have this feeling like Bezos and Zuckerberg, they're like uh, they're investing in, in like Peter Thiel, like getting all the virgin blood and like dousing themselves in it so they can live longer. Yeah. And harvesting organs and uh, stuff. <laughs> if you wanted to buy I have a feeling like they're going to if you want to buy you a share about uh, me. Eight, yeah. Can I can I say something here? Uh, Berkshire Hathaway, um, a stock, okay, mm -hmm. is selling today. If you wanted to buy a share, for three hundred and eleven thousand one hundred and twenty six dollars, and no cents. Yep. So that's one share, one share can, of Berkshire I can take Hathaway. One three hundred thousandth of that. Hmm? <laughs> he he's never split that stock ever. Mm. No. No. Uh, there is a cheaper Berkshire Hathaway stock, though, that you can get for like fifty-six bucks or something like that. No, but it's not I, I think the, that it's, one's still expensive too. It, it's like three thousand or yeah, it's about three thousand. Yeah, is it? yeah. But shit I'm, ain't cheap. Hmm? What were you gonna say, John? The shit that shit ain't cheap. No. You know, I I do business with a Berkshire Hathaway company called Shaw Industries, and before Buffett bought it, it sucked. After Buffett bought it, it is the best. Uh, supplier that anyone has in the floor covering industry. Uh, there's a different culture. Uh, whatever he's doing, he's doing it right. You know? He doesn't well, do anything them. to the companies. He lets them run them themselves. Yeah. He just buys I, them cheap. I, yes, but there's a different culture now. Yeah. And, uh, it's, uh, well, they know they, they've got support. You know, they've got financial well, backing. If you have, they've if got if benefits. If you have Geico Insurance, you're dealing with Berkshire Hathaway. So... Yeah. You know. Is Progressive Soros George Soros? Progressive? Um, uh, uh, no. it, I don't. I don't know. I, I have no idea. It might, have, it might be. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And that means because that it's called Flo, Progressive. Yeah. That, no, but that means that Flo is, uh, you know, hawking for George Soros. And, no, Soros uh, doesn't own Progressive. Who owns Progressive? I. It's I probably it's some morons because they got the worst ads on television. Oh, don't like Flo. <laughs> Oh, they're I terrible. Like they're they're I don't. I don't know who sits in a boardroom somewhere and says, "Listen, I got the next great ad for us." I agree. You know, Flo's <laughs> going to Flo's the, the Flo's going to do uh, uh, karaoke. What about Ooh, the half huh? man, How about that? Half, huh? so what about the half man, half motorcycle ad? Oh yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, what the fuck uh, is that? Yeah, what is that? 
I like when he rears up on on the, on the mountaintop there. Everybody, the everybody's trying to be everybody's trying to be witty, like Geico, yeah. you know. And Geico does have yeah. great ads, you know. I uh, could do without the do. fucking emu too. The yeah. emu? Oh, that! Yeah. Forget that. I don't know. I don't know how they feel they're selling anything with Limu the emu. Oh, that's the worst. Yeah, that's so bad. I, I once had to. Uh, I once had an emu knock on my door when I lived in New York. I'm serious. Yeah. It, I looked up and there was an emu there, and he was like pecking at his uh, his reflection in the door. And so I went out, and it turns out the guy down the street had a pet emu, and it got. There was a backfire of a truck, and it got uh, excited, and it jumped the fence. So I uh, I worked for the dog shelter at the time in Newburgh, and I had all these leashes. So we tried to put a leash around its neck. It would not go. So what I found was I got big brooms. If you hold big brooms out, like your arms are really big, and you go towards it, it'll go in the opposite direction. So I gave him two brooms and me two brooms, and we ushered it back into his pen. It was like a kilometer away. Okay. True, st true story. <laughs> true story. Did he try? Did, by the way, did the emu try to sell you insurance at all? <laughs> <laughs> no, but he was pretty annoying. No, and the I, guy had tried to pick him up. He was wearing like really thick jeans. The the emu's claws shredded his jeans, and he had cuts you wouldn't believe. I was like, dude, don't try to pick up the emu. Let's just try to corral him. His but name was Doug, right? <laughs> His name was what? <laughs> His and name his was Doug, right? Right. <laughs> right, right. So anyway, I just you know I I uh, 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 it, it, it just well getting back to the main premise of what I was saying, I just you know these people are making a lot of money off off coronavirus. I mean oh. that's why the stock market has rebounded. It's rebounded as a result of those stocks literally oh. making money mm -hmm. off of the, off of the pandemic. You kind of went nodded no, Robert. Uh, yeah, I don't. I don't buy your premise at all. In this really? case, I'm sorry. Okay. I don't see where they're making money off of the virus. Right. It's not as though people no. say, no. "Okay, oh, shit, let's the say virus as, is as, coming, as I'm going to go buy a computer." Okay, let's say as a result of the virus. How's that? I, I still don't buy that yeah, at all. Man. I just think they're doing business, and people are still buying and and whatever. Right. My online <laughs> shopping has increased. My online shopping has increased greatly since the. Oh yeah, exactly. mine is that's way up. That's not mine the, is that's super not, up. Let, not, let, let, Charlie let Charlie talk. Let Charlie let Charlie talk. Yes, Charlie. That's how they're making money. I or I've ordered ten times as much online through Amazon yeah. than I ordered last year because I don't want to leave the fucking house. Well, that's that's how they're, they're making they're, money. They're, I ordered from Lazada and shopping. We don't life. have Amazon. I agree with Robert. They're the right people in the right place at the right time. It was, uh, it was. You can look at it as an opportunity, but they, they were just, you know, they were just standing yeah, John, in the right place. John right. Larkin has his yeah, hand yeah. up. Yes, John. They still made money due to the the, yeah. the, the pandemic. So what that is that should be is that should if that's going to be illegal, I don't want to no, live in. I'm not no, saying no. it should be illegal. Alex well, never well, I mean, said, but you almost sound we clarified like you, that early. I, you almost I, sound like you 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 sound almost uh, like you resent it. No, no. What I'm saying uh, is, I just think it would be nice of these companies who have benefited from the COVID crisis and they have benefited from it. Okay, were to somehow find some way to give back. In but one you don't way know that they, well, do or they don't. Well, because I haven't heard they, of anything. They, they well, do that, a little bit. Mackenzie Bezos just gave out like a billion dollars, and you know that's technically Amazon money. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yes, Charlie. And then, yeah, uh, then they, John. They, John wanted to say something. Yeah, I was just going to say, you know, uh, the the price of the stock on the stock market doesn't have a whole lot to do with how well the actual companies are doing. That's right. It's you know it's basically just guys on Wall Street gamblers. You know, it's like a casino and. They're yeah, just that's the true. Price up and down and stuff. I mean, you know, I mean, over a long period of time, yeah, the, your profitable companies will do well. But you know, like like Kodak, you know, the stock took off. It had no fundamental reason for doing that except for a bunch of you know, got sharpies going. Hey, man, let's buy this stock and then dump it. You know, no, what what happened was the the they got a loan. They were going to get a loan or uh, and yeah. and a, and a bunch of the executives did some pretty shady stuff and they yeah. 
screwed all of those people that could have been working up in Rochester and, and that area. They screwed those people. Uh, you know, mm-hmm. Kodak sucks. And, and yeah. I wouldn't and buy their that, product. You know who the worst is? That fucker that works for Trump, uh, Peter Navarro. That scumbag was the one that was involved in the whole thing, too. Uh, it wasn't his price. fault. It wasn't his fault. It was his fault. He was the one that fucking started the whole thing. No, he fucking started the whole thing. Read the Wall matter. Street Journal. It was a good thing, but they. It wasn't. Up. It was a scam. Okay. It, it was a total scam. Work. It uh, was a stock market manipulation, and he was involved in it. And he should go to jail for that. Down here, down here. Charlie's got his hand up. Down here. Guys, Charlie's hand is permanently up. Yeah, Charlie. I've been trying to make this point. Yeah, Rob said he act like I, I that I act like I resent it. What yeah. I resent is the fact that Amazon had eleven fucking billion dollars in profit last year and paid zero in taxes. But that's got nothing to do. That's, that's got to change. Profit. That's got to change. They're going to make billions of more profit. At least let them pay taxes on those. I profits. agree with you. That I agree with you. But I mean, I'm, when I heard Alex say that you know their people are making money on this, well, that's what business is all about. The, all the companies that sell PPE or whatever the hell it is, they're all making a shit ton of money. That's just the way, that's yeah. capitalism. I mean, there's nothing wrong with that. But I agree. Did I, ever mention, did I ever mention that I hate capitalism? Well, <laughs> like I don't. I, I do. Compassionate capitalism. I, I do, the way it's practiced in this country. Uh, I, I think it's gotten to the point where, where it's turned into just uh, unabated greed. Uh, if you, you know, if you can't have uh, uh, capitalism, but it should be modified, you know, there should be a liberal amount of socialism in with that. And it, and it's, it, um, what's his name? Cho and was it Cho and Lai who was the, uh, prim- the prime minister or the chairman of uh, China years ago when he was being interviewed by Mike Wallace and he opened up uh, Hong Kong to commerce and things like that. He said, I, I thought you hated capitalism. He says, no, I don't hate capitalism. I like capitalism as long as it benefits everyone. Well, that's and not in capitalism. this country, capitalism doesn't benefit everyone. But that's not the definition of capitalism. How can it benefit everyone? Well, uh, the, to me, the definition of capitalism, the way we practice it here, is pure and utter greed. You know. But that's just that's me. That's why, like, Bill and Melinda Gates, I, I, I know a lot of people... You know, say other things about them, but they do a lot of help, a That's lot right. of stuff with us for Africa for tuberculosis. They put a lot of money back into areas that they don't need to. Well, but well I mean, God, no, really, God bless Bill and Melinda Gates. I mean, here's a guy who yeah. made the billions. He still makes the billions. He gives it away, and he still doesn't. He said, "I'm going to give away, keep giving away, and keep giving away." And he's worth more today than the day he started giving money away. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, he, but he has spent his money in good works, and that's that's terrific. Very, very uh, Kevin, work. you've been very quiet here. Anything to, to add to this? Yeah, hey, Alex, what'd you have for breakfast this morning? Well, I had bacon. <laughs> that was it. Bacon. I Canadian love ba- bacon. I love... That's just ham. No, ba- hey, how bacon. are the fires, Kevin? How are the fires over there? Oh, the fires suck. They're blowing up all over the place here. R- really? Are you, are yeah, you... They're getting closer. Yeah. To your place? Yeah. Yeah, well, not necessarily my place, but they're they're getting closer around. You know, yeah. the, it's getting darker big, around here. Big Basin is gone. Oh, big yeah. Basin, big yeah. Basin. They've That's got, so sad. Uh, yeah. The hill down here, the, they're starting you to know, creep into I, the county I, down here. Here's a case where the fires were not started by an individual in a lit cigarette. Except the one in Big Sur. There is Jack one in Big Sur. There, 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 there is one that was that really? way. But most yeah. of it is because of lightning. Li- because of lightning. And then yeah. I saw those pictures of lightning on the Golden Gate Bridge and on the Bay Bridge. Yeah. I mean, over 10,000 strikes in California. And wow. we're supposed to get some more this weekend, they said. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's it's terrible. But you see, here's the thing. It's in, an interesting scientific thing. What do you do about fires that are started by lightning? Uh, some people say you don't put them out because that's nature having its way and that you need fires occasionally in forests to make new forests because what it does is it makes the the seeds pop out because of the heat and replant new trees. Uh, so there is a lot of times when they have these fires, they have to decide which ones are we going to put out. 
Which ones are we going to let burn? That's your house is in the way. Well, when they're in the way of a house, I think that's when we, we, we start to put out the fires. But there are other fires that you don't put out because you need to. It's 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 a question of how we let nature have its way and at the same yeah. time protect There's ourselves. A lot of houses in the way of these. Yeah. That's the problem. Well, is it that yeah. we put I'm houses with that right now? Is it that we've put houses in places where we shouldn't be putting houses? Probably. Well, yeah. Alex, I'm dealing with that right now because I still got these civet cats. I caught two of the babies and gave them to the wildlife people, but the mother and one of the babies is still up there. They were making a lot of noise last night with some cow. Had to get the trap out again, and uh, up there, and I got a camera. I'm gonna try to get rid of them, but you know, I'm sure that they were here first. Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, it, it, you know? it, it's it's really a question of uh, how do you how do you balance this kind of thing? And in the case of California. I mean, if they if they didn't build houses in every square inch where they have built them, uh, maybe a lot of houses wouldn't be in trouble. I mean, it's 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 a it's a big question to ask yourself as to how much do you? Yeah, well, a lot of the houses are built up in the Santa Cruz Mountains that are away from everybody else too. I mean, they they decided I'm going to get away from people and they go up into the mountains and they say, okay, I'm going to build my house here and they clear some trees and now they're up in the boonies hey, didn't guy from u2 try to do that what's that the edge the edge yeah, from u2 he tried to build up there yeah, yeah a lot of them a lot of them do i mean you got the hp people and all that stuff up there too and, yeah you know hey the president tried to tell you you guys should be sweeping your forest floors. Yeah, did you hear that? The yeah. jackass he started that <laughs> shit again did he start that <laughs> shit again? years ago same thing yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, uh, uh, if, while you're at it, have, have a good slug of Clorox. Yes, Jeff. I heard him gaslighting well, today like no well, tomorrow. <laughs> uh, we have like 500 people who live in the same area, mm -hmm. uh, and all these houses were built by the same company. Yeah. And all of a sudden, we have well, uh, big animals out there mm -hmm. that are natural animals. What, what can you say? Buffaloes and you know all this kind of crap that that people don't expect these these uh, natural animals to live in, but they do, and they come by, and yeah. there's nothing you can do about it. Yeah, and there's some, with global warming, warming also the the animals start coming down because there's no food up there. If things are drying out, they start coming uh, down to the city. They have well, also they have also what, also what? What? You go back to what Trump said, you know, about the, the rake and the leaves and all that shit. I mean, it's the same situation on the East Coast. You got a lot of, of foliage and everything else on the East Coast, but you guys get a lot of rain. Yes. So it gets dumped on a lot, and you don't have that situation out yes. here. It's drier. We don't get rain all the time. Mm -hmm. So it gets dry, and you get a spark, and it starts a fire. In fact, we isn't California rain. technically still in a drought? Uh, not really, but not it's really. close. It's mm. you know we haven't we haven't got we don't get a lot of rain. Yeah. You know yeah, we get it in the ra in the rainy season and it, it spits for a while and then it, it goes away. But but our typical summers and and um, springs are you know we get our green time, but it lasts for about three or four months and then it's brown again. You know, in San Francisco today, I, I looked. They said it was drizzling. Uh, uh, I didn't yeah, from the that. fog. Uh, it was from the fog. Yeah, they, uh, well, the weather uh, thing on the, my phone. Yeah, when the marine layer pretty, comes in, that's what we get. Pretty, but you know that that lasts today. for about three or four hours in the morning, and it goes away. But was it was the Newsom also saying that some of that money that they were using to clean out some of the forest areas was federal money, and they're being cut off by that too? Like two years yeah. ago, when they were talking. About I want I want to quickly ask Rob, how's your brother doing? He's doing well. He's um, he's. Uh, been to a whole bunch of doctors yeah he, he's very lucky he's on a bunch of medications he's going to have a surgical procedure in a couple of months to help regulate his heart they scar it they know how to scar the heart and do certain things to it so that it afib doesn't happen and this way they can take okay. him off blood thinners Good. i guess robert sounds like he knows about that yes i had it D did really I didn't have 
Um, I didn't have AFib. I had something called SVTs, which are just um, suddenly you get a tremendously rapid heartbeat. No, they told you they told you wrong, Rob, Robert. They told you wrong. It was STD. Oh, 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 oh. yeah. It must have been that uh, Stormy Daniels night yeah, I spent. Yeah. <laughs> it, they, the he's, cardio thing for it's, an, it's called an ablation. An ablation. Uh, yeah, does that work? That thing that they sell on TV for eighty nine bucks or? I don't know. Uh, that's like a six hour procedure and they say it's like 99 point whatever percent effective in yeah. my case in my case it, it was called an ablation what they do is they go through your groin just like if you were doing an angiogram you're you're knocked out completely and i woke up i think it was only in my case about three hours yeah. and i walked home i mean i walked out of the place that same afternoon you were, I, you I was, were wait, 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 hold on a second you were out for three hours I was I was under, yeah. Oh wow! I was under for it. I mean, it's scary because they're tinkering with your heart. But the yeah. person that did it said they do like, you know, ten or fifteen of these in this particular clinic a day. Jesus, and, and they're and very I, effective. Robert, I had an angioplasty that they went in through the groin, and there was no way I was not I was going to be able to walk out of there. I, you uh, know. I, I was fine. Really? That's what they fact, told what him. What it does is they tell you, in my case anyway, you don't have a heart problem. You have an electrical problem. Yeah. That there's an electrical circuit between your heart and your brain that's gone wacky. Right. And they can locate that center in the heart. And they actually, as you said, Rob, they yeah. burn it. Yeah. And in effect, what it does is it renders it, you know, not usable. And your heart actually rewires the signaling. It's it's really remarkable. I you know, twenty years ago, I don't know. So, can his brother look forward to a complete uh, recovery with this? Well, yeah. they told him it'll get him off blood thinners because right now the big thing is he could get a, another stroke if your heart starts beating off in reverse. That's what caused his initial stroke. So, because of that, he's on blood thinners and all that. They said you, that'll all go away. Um, yeah. Mm. So really, <clears throat> yeah. It's I had this. Too. Oh, you and had the, it? Oh, you had it too. <clears throat> of course, he's, he's everything. <laughs> everything. Welcome, yeah, ladies yeah. and gentlemen, to the Alex Bennett Hospital. Yeah. There you go. The uh, waiting room. Yeah. Uh, one other thing. Well, wait, a minute, wait a minute. Wait a minute. I'm. Li we're, we're listening to Jeff. Robert, do, did you have this done by a Boston Scientific uh, device? Uh, who? Uh, Robert. Robert. Um, no, it was a device. There's no device involved. There's in no it. implant put in there? No, sir. Over? No, my, none my whatsoever. Stent, my stent was Boston Scientific, but uh, I was going to mention that uh, uh, there's a GoFundMe for Will Durst again. Now, it, it reached their goal uh, in, a, in a couple of hours, but uh, they're still uh, accepting uh, donations. Mm -hmm. Okay. On his GoFundMe. Mm -hmm. Are you going to post it again, Alex? No. How's he doing? No. What? Uh, uh, I, I, he's he's he's, doing? he's not doing great. No. Yeah. No. You know. Um, <clears throat> no, I I went through that once, Phil. I I just don't. I think I've done my bit. Okay, you that. raised a lot when you yeah, posted. Yeah, I did. But but I don't think I can go back to my. Uh, what was what, what's uh, yeah my uh, pool uh, and get people to give again. You know, I don't know. You know, um, Did you hear uh, that uh, Bannon when they uh, when they did that GoFundMe, they were supposed to raise a billion dollars, but they only raised like twenty three million. So the GoFundMe wait, said, wait, wait, uh, "Wait a minute, hold on." Okay, well you got to pay pay the money back to those guys that donated it. So they uh, they real quickly set up some sham companies to you know start diverting the money away. So I don't think you get the, the money, money until it reaches the goal. Right. That's what. That's why they couldn't get the money. But so I, that's why I, they created. I, the I, I think you're wrong, Phil. I think they changed that. Oh. Okay. Yeah. Uh, I mean, technically, you can't get the money unless you hit your the amount that you want that you're supposed to get. But they they formed some kind of sham companies and made a deal. No, but I, I understand from from what uh, Will was doing that uh, he got any money that came in. If he didn't oh, yeah. reach his goal, he, they said he had a goal, and then when the goal was hit, they just stopped. Okay. Oh, yeah. All right. So then they said, okay, well, we reached our goal, but we could use a little more, so we're going to add another $15,000 to the goal. 
and so there was more money being being put in there. Uh, you know, and I, uh, I, I got on the bandwagon. I mean, I may do it again, but I, it's just I, I think I probably went to my well about as much as I could because I did it for about a month on and off, you know, pushing it. Well, uh, they exceeded the eighty-five thousand. I think they're at eighty-six. Is or this a new eighty-five? A new bunch of money? No, or? I, think, I think they're raising the old one uh, a little bit more. Oh, in other words, it's the old one plus. That's why when I saw eighty-five thousand, they right. they raised seventy some odd yeah, thousand. So they raised it up to eighty-five. They're at like eighty-seven. Yeah. So and, uh, you know, I, I, for uh, Michael Pritchard, when he had a heart attack, it, it was a hundred thousand. <laughs> And, uh, you know, but and he they was, raised it right away. Yeah. Oh, well, you know, that money's going to go fast, you know. Well, but I I thought he had insurance. If, if but, folks, if you're watching us and you want to give, uh, go to GoFundMe and look up Will Durst. Okay. Yeah. He's a very good comedian, and he's been a guest on this program. And, uh, you know, send him whatever you can. If it's 25 bucks, it's 25 bucks. If it's a hundred bucks, it's a hundred bucks. Yeah, he's given know. a lot to the ramble and by, a, you know, appearing as many times as he did and would have probably continued if uh, he didn't get sick. Right. Right. So, um, uh, Will Durst, uh, D U R S T. Uh, maybe I will put that up there just to over the weekend yeah. so people can give it a shot, you know? Um, but it, 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 um, I forwarded it to you. Yeah, I know you did. Um, but I, I tried to figure out what the 85000 was, and I'm trying to figure out, was that the 85000 with money that was added to the money they had already raised? Yeah, yeah, yeah. because they started at fifty, I think, and then they raised it to sixty or sixty five, and then to eighty five. Yeah. I mean, this is a very expensive process. The guy had a stroke, a very debilitating stroke, uh, uh, took away... Uh, from his ability to use one arm and what one leg is that the I'm other thing? Sure. yeah and I, I, speech and speech and he's a, he's and a uh, yes I don't he's, understand he's why a, the insurance doesn't pay for the rehabilitation you know that's he doesn't have insurance oh i thought he did no isn't he over 65 yes he yes medicare? yes he should have medicare yeah he probably does have medicare yeah uh but still you know uh you got that Medicare pays eighty percent. Well, and when if you got to pay the other twenty percent, now it's costing you uh, uh, several hundred thousand dollars for your treatment. Yeah, you know you've got to, you've got to pay the rest of that, and and usually most people have a lot of people have supplemental insurance to take care of that. Yeah, but then a lot of people don't, and in the case of comedians, uh, they can barely keep food on the table. You know. But he, he was working a lot. You know? Yeah, but he wasn't. He still wasn't making a fortune. Okay, no. not a not enough money that I think he, they put away much of anything. You know, yeah. uh, and uh, uh, for years I was yelling and screaming that there should be a comedians union, so that they could get together yeah. and have health insurance, N not to negotiate. Maybe like better, a not negotiate better what money. What about like a Robin Williams? Uh, charity fund. Does he have anything? No. Yeah, no matter of no. fact, his house in Belvedere is up for sale, and they've had to lower the price again. It's been on the market uh, uh, for a long time. Uh, and uh, it's down to five. Jay Leno could help him out. Yeah, but Jay Leno hard. I don't you know. Knows Will Durst, so you know it doesn't, uh, doesn't really well, matter. And you know you can comedian. you can ask uh, people. Uh, hey, uh, uh, get Welders out of the uh, out of the uh, out of the dumps here, uh, well, because Willie Brown gave him a thousand bucks today. Yeah, but he worked with Willie Brown. I know. You know, yeah. he worked with Willie Brown, and he and Willie had a relationship going. Uh, but uh, and Willie's got a thousand. Oh yeah, you know, his girlfriend may yeah. be in the White House. Hmm? His girlfriend may be in the White House. His girlfriend of years ago. You know, yeah. old flame. Uh, old flame. No, they had a relationship. They make no bones about it. You know, he was her mentor. You know, I hope she learned all the good stuff from him and not the bad stuff. But, you know. Yeah, plenty of bad. Whatever. There, oh, there is plenty of bad. Yeah. But uh, anyway, so uh, so fires down in your area, um, Kevin. 
uh, life's pretty complacent where Josh lives. The air quality in the East Bay, Napa, and those areas, just absolutely awful. Yeah. It was a, it was a little better today than it was yesterday. Yesterday was... Uh, and now here's not. Phil with the weather. Yeah. Uh, uh, Josh, uh, how's, the, how's the COVID uh, hitting your area? About the same, I guess. I haven't noticed much change. Yeah. Are people still stupid and not wearing masks, or are they more of them wearing masks? Well, I don't really go out much in public. I mean, yeah. I see it at my work because it's kind of mandated. I mean, there's a mandate, you know, in the state. I think I see a lot of people wearing them. And in your area, Rob, it's, uh, yeah. it's, you, you don't have a huge impact there, right? No. And it's, I think, the like I said, the entire county was... 400 or something like that yeah and you're allowed to come to new york without having to i thought you told me virginia was on the list oh, is virginia on the list i thought it came off the list or oh somebody... that'd be great i don't know i, have... I gotta get it because you see i can't get in to see my mom if we're on the list yeah there's a big and story I... today about uh a uh, uh, two a couple that wanted to get married and they couldn't have a reception because the governor said no more 150 people are not allowed to have a reception, uh, and they're complaining and yelling and screaming. Um, what do you do about that? Do you, do you call Cuomo a party pooper because he won't let you have 150 people have a party? Colleges are breaking out. Yeah. Oh God! Because those kids are stupid. Have you seen some Spoiled. of the pictures? Yeah. Just call it a well, riot, um, and you'll be able to have the wedding. Just call. I know it at uh, West Virginia University. Every single person gets a free test if you come back to campus. And you have to take a, um, a, a online course. It takes about, about a half an hour to 45 minutes, pass quizzes, to, you know, about how it's spread, what you have to do. Mm -hmm. We'll see what happens. Okay, yeah, your, your mic's breaking up a little bit. Um, but anyway, so, you know... Uh, yeah, I, I've just never in my lifetime known us to have as many problems happening. And then, and then you add to it hurricanes uh, and things like that. And there's an asteroid coming. There's an asteroid coming. Please. Asteroid. Please. Yeah. Please. November 3rd. It's going to hit the day before the election. They say one in 200 chance. Yeah, right. For years we've been watching disaster movies. Now finally we yeah. are one. Yeah. <clears throat> you know. And then you add to that the, uh, the political climate in the country and it's uh you know where if we're going to solve these problems nothing can get done because everybody's arguing with everybody else and we're all sitting yeah, here you're right alex huh you're absolutely right alex yeah. you hit the nail on the head we're, we're all arguing with everyone yeah and it's, you think it's, we could get anything done i don't think biden can get anything done i when i listen to the dnc i'm like pie in the sky pie in the sky because Trump and everybody's going to be, he's going to have the one fifth against him all the time pushing. And why do we want a better like, world? We want a better world for her. Wait a minute. There she is. Yeah. Yeah. We want a better world for her. There's Adrian. That happens to be Brian's uh, youngest. And uh, she loves, Brian, do you notice how she loves posing? Yeah. I, I think she, I, I, I think she wants to be a model. Uh, she wants to be a dancer. A dancer? Oh. Who's your favorite group? Uh, I got a niece who's a dancer. Who? Black. I tell him. Black Pink. Yeah. Black oh, you Pink. like that? Dun, 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 dun. Yeah, anyway. Hey! <laughs> That's it for tonight. Uh, yes, Bree is going to dance us off. Uh, it's uh, it, Robert, thank you. Thank you very much, Adrian, and thank you, Daddy, for me as well. Brian, th uh, Josh, thank you. Uh, Charlie, always a pleasure. Bree, uh, great to see you out working in the garden. Uh, Jeff, great to see you hearty and healthy from Connecticut. Uh, uh, Phil Meyer, thank you so much. Uh, <laughs> um, um, uh, 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 John, thank you for being with us, John Larkin. And uh, Rob, 
I got to send you some copy. I need you to do some uh, voiceovers for me. Okay. Okay. And uh, uh, Rob, uh, Tony, we didn't hear much from you tonight, but g good to have you here. And and Kevin's been a little quiet, but uh, you know, uh, I love all of you. I really have a good time with you. Uh, you make these hour and a half fly by really fast for me. Hey. Give a big wave goodbye, and I will give a big wave goodbye back at you. See, here I go, and there they go. That's uh, have a nice weekend, everybody. Yeah, uh, that's our uh, that's our uh, panel for tonight. Boy, what a good one. Uh, uh, let's see here. Oh, uh, it's uh, it's the uh, intersection next with Jack Bishop, and uh, we'll be back again on Tuesday at 10.30 in the evening, Eastern Daylight Time, same time, same station in life. And in the meantime, if you see her, tell her I love her. And by the way, stay safe out there. And for crying out loud, wear a mask, will you? Bye-bye, everybody. <laughs>